Okay, so this would be day 28 of the 30-day servo motion servo uh, project that we're doing. Uh, everything is completed, working, um, everything's done. So if you haven't seen that, check out the prior videos. Um, you know, they'll be in the show notes below. Uh, what we're going to go over today is the ACD file, um, which is everything we've done to create everything. Uh, first and foremost, we came in and we set our processor. Uh, it's an emulate system, emulated system. Uh, we named it the, you know, the U2 30 day challenge or 30 day, you know, project. Uh, we did come in and set our time synchronization because it's a servo based system, right? We added our controls for our, uh, each servo. Actually, before we did that, let me let me add the fact that we came down and added the servos into the system. So we added servo one, two, three, four, and then the virtual master. So the virtual master controls all the uh, axis one and axis two, axis three, and axis four. We came in and programmed the ability to home the axis on each one. So each one's identical, right? Because we basically did uh, modulus programming. We copied and just changed the tag structure. We did the control bit, which says, okay, if you're not faulted or if you are faulted, do proper resets upon that. Um, we came down and we did the draw control. So what we did in here is we cha we're changing the, the um, uh, motion axis gear based upon the draw control that we, we told it to do um, on the HMI. So this this logic is, is coincides with the same thing we have on each one as all of them do. So the draw, draw system just looks the same on each one. In this instance, we uh, to kind of explain this right here, we said, okay, with draw control is enabled, uh, the motion is geared, uh, at that point it's geared. We wanted to have, uh, if the draw is changed then we want to quickly cut on this bit which interrupts the process of the uh, a consistent flow of um, over to the motion axis gear and when we when we do that what it does is is it moves it into the value right so the last value we compare basically compare the last value to the new value um, if it's not equal to then we make that bit high and it breaks this logic when it does, it updates, updates this in split second, it automatically pops back in and changes the ratio. So it changes the speed, changes the, uh, the draw ratio. Okay, so that sums up basically what we did on the servos. The speed calculation we didn't do nothing with because we didn't have to. Um, the control for the... the um, virtual master basically we said all if all axes are okay the servo system's okay if the uh, state machine is commanded to run then we want to delay the system to run based upon you know uh, just to show you state transitions if all axes are geared then once they're geared go ahead and cut a jog on and once we cut the jog on the system will run now, if any time they're ungeared, we, we initiate a stop. So that would stop the whole system. Now, using this, uh, so that if, if basically to, to break this down a little bit further, each one of these axes, one, two, three, and four, follow the virtual master. So if the virtual master is told to cut on, it will cut on each one of these. If you, if you look, look back at the, the draw screen, if it's told to cut on, it, as long as this is, is uh, geared to the, as long as the axis is geared to the virtual master, it will run. Then we did the initialization. I don't think we put anything in there, so uh, we, of course we didn't need to. Um, so basically we just have the, the start system. Uh, the state machine, and look, before we go to the state machine, because it, it gets kind of in-depth, um, let's go over the faults. So in the fault screen, we had every fault that we have that would shut down the state machine. And we added in the ALMD, 
which would give a digital alarm to the alarms in the event summary on the HMI. This is broke down uh, basically, uh, you know, with the first tag and a description. So uh, we also did system comms because we did a remote system that had another PLC doing the starts and the stops of our system, right? So that's basically where that goes. Um, and then let's break down to the state logic. Okay. So we said that the state numbers were 0 is an E stop, 1 is a stop, 2 we're not using, 3 is a stop and ready, a system start would be 4, waiting to stop would be 5. That means it's running and waiting to stop. In the state of zero, if, okay, so if not the input of the E stop and the system ready bit is high, then you want to go to a one. Then if by chance the E stop is pressed, then go back to a zero. If not, and the system is ready, go to a 3. So skip 2, go to a 3. The same thing happens in all of these as far as the start of this. If the e-stop is pressed, it goes to 0. If it's not ready, and it the system goes to a 1. If it is ready, so if the system is ready and it a start is pressed, then it goes to a 4. And in that 4, we have the same thing. The, the e-stop hits, goes to a 0. If the ready or not ready happens, <clears throat> if a stopped button is pressed or a not ready, then it goes to a 1. If the system is running, it goes to a 5. And then the 5, it's ready. All it's doing is waiting for the stop. It's either an e-stop can stop it or a stop button can stop it. So this is, and to break this down a little bit further, this is a case of the machine state, right? Then it goes to one, 0, 1, 2, 3, R1, 2, R1, 3, 5, 4, and 5. To get the control of that, <clears throat> we did, basically we feed the input statuses, like input one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then so on. So that's what feeds into this scenario. So if I look at this bit, it would be the system stop bit would be uh, alias to machine at, uh, SSL input 2. So if I did machine stop, right? Machine stop is machine SSL input 2. So it, it's alias to what's happening over here. So even though you can't see that, they're all aliased. <clears throat> so to break this down a little bit further, those states go into um, an indirect addressing system, which we have an array built of a dent of 50. And in that dent of 50, we basically say whatever or the array is fed then in that instance, we want to go ahead and, you know, feed it out what it should be. <clears throat> so uh, I guess with that said, like say for instance, it's in a five right now. So if we stop the system, stop it. If we stop the system, you see, so it's a, basically it went to a three. Well, if you hover over this bit, the indirect address is 3. But in the if we went to the address of the array, and we went to 3, which is right here, it would be bit 3, which equals binarily equals to an 8. So in binary coded decimal, which is basically 32 bits, right? bit 3 would equal 8. 
So that's why you see an 8 populated right here. So in the machine state out. Now we use these bits. <coughs> excuse me. We use these bits alias over to right here. So if you see the machine state or machine SSL out 5, we alias the start bit based upon what's happening right here. So we said we basically alias this over to the machine start, which would be the start over here. If it goes into a state of five, then it would start the system. And I can I can show you that real quick. So real quick, we'll go to a state of five. Okay, it's in a state of five, right? That state of five just uh, just started. So let's go back to right here. It started this, and so within that time limit, it started everything. And you can tell that it started everything. I would kind of wish it would have been kind of lagged a little, little bit more so you could see it. But you can tell it's running because everything down here is waiting in, in the next state. It's in the running state, right? It's saying that all virtual, all the uh, axes are running at their set speeds based upon the draws. Um, so the main thing I, I kind of want to break down, though, uh, is the way the state logic's done. And we did the uh, next states and stuff like that, like the next state. So right now it's in a state of five. If it's in a state of five, the next state is six. Um, realistically, the next state is one after that. So... <coughs> <clears throat> because we did not do anything so what we could do uh, being that our states didn't break down that far uh, we just kind of highlight these out and uh, you know because we're not using them right comment them out so two backslashes or two forward slashes how do you look at it backslash um, so let's comment this out. I knew I'd do that. So let's go to here. And I wasn't trying to program on this. I just I wanted to tighten up something I left out. Um, but this shows you how you should go back and double check your work, right? The system was fully functional. Uh, all this was was a state indicator anyway. So it's not a big deal. Uh, so we said at a state of 5, right, then the next state is 1. So basically, um, no matter what, what the state is, it, we just did 1 through 5. Uh, naturally, you would go through 1 through 32 if you had a system that big. We did previous steps the same way. Um, I'm not going to go through it for the sake of time. I'm not going to go through and add, edit this because uh, it's basically just a case of case of this number is going to go here. So case of five, then it's going to go to four. So I actually did fix that one. No, that's previous. No, so either way. Um, the state machine is fully functional, though. Uh, we've seen that on the last uh, couple videos. Um, you know, so I just basically want to go over the hierarchy of the state machine. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty good logic, you know. It's just a, if this happens, then this happens, right? Uh, else if, you know. But how that's fed is basically feeding it off ladder logic on the front side for the inputs to transition. And then the output comes off of indirect addressing based upon an array. So whatever you set that array as. And then you can use that to justify, you know, what you're doing. So um, the kind of breakdown, you know, the hierarchy of how everything works. Hopefully that gave you a little bit more clarification of the whole system as it can, you know, is running and comes comes together, um, and what we did to to get everything working. Um, we did add. Let's see what else should we add? Because this is gonna, probably going to be the final video. Um, you know, there's no reason to, to add another two days to it. Um, I think that, you know, we went over and, and kind of 
we'll run it one more one last time. This is gonna be the last probably last video, but um, so we added the uh, the user defines the basic you know, UDT right, so we could control our servos. We added our produced and consumed, which we used over here uh, on the the other processor, and so we came down and that's basically all we we did on the ACD file. So real quick, what I want to do is start the clients and show you the system running one last time because even though it was a 30 day project, we got it done a little bit ahead of time. So granted, there's some more stuff that we could probably do, but uh, I would hate to break this, you know, break into too much more. I think we could carry on to more itemized stuff. Um, like loop controls and stuff of that nature in different videos. I don't think we should break into that on this video. But I would like to show it working one last time just so you can, you know, see the full system working. Okay, so everything's popping up, uh, starting up. Again, this was our 30-day YouTube project, Servo Motion Project HMI. Uh, we have our sign. If we wanted to sign in, we have our server status. Uh, we have the current state of the machine it's running. Uh, we have our access screen, so we can stop it if we wanted to. Um, so it goes to a stop and ready state. We uh, we start it. It starts. It requests to start. Then it starts running. Uh, they go to their draws. So if you wanted to change the draw, you could. Um, then that, that based upon, like I said, one point seven five. So that it number should increase now. Okay. So if we just hit an e stop, then the whole system. You now based upon the system, it that's what it goes into uh, in the state machine. <clears throat> go in here and we can see on our fault screen that the, the e-stop is pressed go in take it off so let's look at what happened to the state machine when the e-stop was pressed e-stop was pressed it went to a state of zero which again if you go look back in this if a zero is pressed on any given time it's going to take the state to a zero <clears throat> so maybe that kind of ties things in a little bit better it automatically goes back to a ready state because it goes from a zero, one, and then it, and then it goes to a three. Happens really quick, so um, there's no reason to, you know, question if that's working. I mean, it's just a really quick system. Um, so with that being concluded, this was our 30-day motion servo project. Um, if you have any questions or you would like me to go over this any further please leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll be glad to do so. Uh, otherwise, I will continue on, on other videos and topics that I, I get emailed and um, things of that nature. So if you get any topics or something you want, want me to, to discuss, just let me know and I'll be glad to do so. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your support and uh, everything. You know, just uh, it's been really, really good. So again, uh, thank you and... Uh, We'll have some more videos coming out for you.